there it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and it's a little bit past midnight so it's officially goth Toba. I'm so excited today is day one it's 10 minutes in and I'm about to start my first book I have way too much energy for past midnight so we're going to use it productively and do some reading shout out to Hannah from Perusing Hannah for chatting with me all evening and talking books among other things because it's been a nice way to spend the evening with someone and we're both starting our reading for Goftober and so I decided the first book I'm going to read is Death Note volume 5 and this cover is wonderful I always love these editions covers of the Death Note series and I'm just excited to continue the story with this fifth volume I think it's something nice and easy on the brain seeing as it's the middle of the night it's got lots of illustrations because it's a manga but even though I said easy on the brain it's going to have a lot of mind games because this one follows I've described death notes so much on my channel so we live in Japan in this world where death gods exist or the gods of death and they write in their death note when someone should die and how they should die and that happens but one of the gods of death gets bored and drops his death note down to earth and a teenage boy picks it up and decides he's going to use this power to meet justice on different criminals and that's where the story starts but it goes from there and it becomes a big game of cat and mouse with a lot of brain power behind it and it's absolutely fun and absolutely fascinating i love the anime and i'm working my way through the series and i'm about to get further because i do need to get better at reading my sequels i've definitely been reading a lot of standalones this year so let's get some reading underway Okay, so it's coming up to midnight, so I will be going to bed, but I read all oh, the wrong way around. I read a quarter of the way through Death Note Volume 5, and I'm still enjoying it. It's a bit, like, it's getting a bit much sometimes, but I'm really enjoying it. I just love Misa so much. Say what you want about this little airhead, but she wears very gothic style clothing, and her fashion sense is immaculate, and I absolutely love her for that. But without further ado, let's go to bed. up to the evening it's almost 6 p.m on the first day and i just haven't really given you many updates because i have been so 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 busy i am so tired so for the last few hours since i've seen you i have meal prepped this morning and then i went food shopping and that was all before breakfast i came in i ate some food and then i started deep cleaning so tomorrow is my flat check my flatmate is moving out, I'm staying here, I'm moving into the bigger room and I'm getting a new flatmate in here. So tomorrow's our flat check and we wanted it to be spick and span and as clean as possible. And admittedly, we haven't done some cleaning for a while. I've been here alone for the past few days. It just, I've been busy. The flat was a mess. But why I'm telling you all of this is because while you're thinking, what were you doing? You weren't reading for the first day of your readathon. Nope, I really was. Because when I started my meal prep, I started reading The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. And I've decided to audiobook this one because I thought it'd be helpful to have one audiobook at least throughout the readathon. I'm not a big audiobook, I haven't been doing it much lately, but you know, Script comes through. And Script is a subscription service where you can borrow as many audiobooks as you want in a month all under the same payment and there's loads of other things there's ebooks there's podcasts there's a whole lot more and if you would like to try script for free for the 60 days 60 days free you can click the link down in my description box below it's the link at the bottom and i will also get some free days too so it's a great way to support me but yes i started audiobooking this one and let me tell you this fantasy book is a massive chonker it clocks in at 662 pages and the audiobook is 28 hours long and I am halfway 
I listen at two times speed, so it's seven hours of listening. I've been cleaning and cooking and things like that for seven hours. I can hardly believe it myself, but that does mean that my chunkiest read for the readathon, I am halfway through on the first day. So what is this book about? The synopsis doesn't really tell you too much and I don't want to tell you too much either. I don't even know what the synopsis says. It's just about a man who runs an inn and he's legendary. He's known as the stuff of legends and now he is telling his story. And he's telling his story because some creature has come back. And that is all that I can tell you. The synopsis, there is literally no synopsis. The synopsis is just a quote from a book. But I'm glad I didn't know too much going in and I'm having the best time. I love it. I love this fantasy book so very much. And it's kind of weird to me because it's doing lots of things I don't like. It's told in a flashbacky sense so we can see that the main character is going to survive everything and he's there to tell his story. I typically don't like those kind of books, but here I am loving it. I'm loving the moments when we go to the present day. I'm loving the moments when we go to the past. And it's not really got much of a plot. It's kind of doing what literary fiction does, where it's just telling his story from when he was a child to, I don't even know where this story's gonna take us by the end of it, but it's just telling his story slowly and steadily. We're in his young adult age right now, and I'm having the best time. The world building is fantastic. It's still going. We still don't know that much. I could argue not much has happened. I can argue a lot of things have happened, but I think the main thing going through this is that I really, really like the main character. And I don't think I come across too much fantasy where it is very much a character-driven fantasy book. And that is what this is. Very, very character-driven fantasy. And I love him. So I love this. I think he's a really genuine main character and because he's so genuine and because you feel for his struggles and you feel for what he's been through and you can feel for his ambitions and goals which seem pure enough at the moment i'm having a good time and that's all you can ask of a book this is actually one of the oldest books on my tbr i've been working really hard lately to i've been inspired lately to read the books that have been on my tbr for the longest and although i'm kind of balancing it out with the new books i get in and also books that have been kind of middle on the list i'm really trying to tackle the oldest ones which tend to be the chunky books which tend to be fantasy and i can't believe i let this stew on my tbr for so long because it is very very good and i already know i definitely want to read the sequel but without further ado I'm going to have a nap because I was up until 1am this morning and woke up at 7 to start with all the jazz. And then after my nap, it'll be time for our crafts live show, which of course is something in the past where we do crafts and we just chill and it's the opening live show of the readathon. It's over on my channel today and I'm going to be writing. I'm going to be writing my Afrofuturism horror novel because that is the closest thing that I get to gothic. I won't actually be writing it to be fair, I'm actually going to be doing the planning process and that's as crafty and as creative as I'm going to get. But I just can't believe that I've read 380 pages today if you count Death Note. That is such a good start. I'm so tired but I'm just hopping on to say that the craft and chill live show went well and I finished my 5,000 word plan for my novel that's the sci-fi Afrofuturism one. I've been replanning it. I finished that replanning so I'm all ready to burst it all out in a fury of typing in NaNoWriMo. So that is very exciting. A very successful first day. I'm about to crawl into bed and get some well-deserved sleep. it is the evening of day two and I'm all cozied up a lot has happened today the flat check has happened I will be getting my deposit back I did my bulk filming for the month of October I filmed five videos today 
three TikToks, took five thumbnails and one Instagram photo. I moved my bookshelf from this room to the next room. As I said, I'm moving into the bigger room. I have made sure I ate all of my meals and drank tea. And most importantly, most shockingly, I joined in with Hannah's reading sprints intermittently and I finished. I should take that bookmark out. I finished The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss in two days. In the span of two days, I read a 660 page high fantasy book. I still can't believe it. I'm still not over it. I literally finished one second before picking up the camera. My mind is reeling because this book is essentially a massive prologue. And I really tend to dislike when fantasy books start off and the first book is simply just a prologue and it doesn't carry a plot of its own and it doesn't carry weight of its own and it's pretty much just a promise that there's more to come in the next book. And the flashback elements and the fact that it has a huge, is the whole book a training montage where he's at a school studying and learning how to use his gifts? Yes, 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 yes. And do I usually dislike all of those things? Again, a massive yes. And yet, I loved this book. I loved it. I blitzed through it. I blazed through it. I really liked our main character. I thought he was genuine. I thought he was lovely. I do think the female representation is not as bad as people sometimes give this book credit for. I feel like it was mostly done respectfully. Of course it was done respectfully in a way that it was keeping in mind the options that women had available to them. But all in all, I didn't think the women characters were portrayed too badly. And it was just a very, very good time. I had a good time and I think, not that my reviews have become more critical, but I'm trying to be more open to the fact of when I have a good time, I have a good time and I should rate it as such. Do I have any critiques? My main critique is that this is a prologue and so yeah, by the end of it I thought it was building towards something big happening. Not even big as in the whole series big, but big enough within this book for it to feel like it finished on one conclusive moment and I don't think that happened. That would be my main critique but at the same time I actually don't care that it didn't end that way. I will still read the sequel. I really want to read the sequel now and then I'll be just like everyone else waiting for the third book forever. This is so sad. But anyway this book counts as my prompt for a heavy read which is 660 pages which I think is quite heavy to me. Is ticked off within the first two days, which is better than I thought. I thought that was gonna be my most difficult prompt, but no, it's not. Tomorrow I'm going into the office, so it's probably gonna be a catch up after work, after book club. It is the evening of day four and it's just been a bit busy so I didn't get a chance to update you yesterday but yesterday I went to book club for Babel. I have not finished reading Babel but that was not an issue in the slightest and it was really nice. It was in book bar and I really like that independent bookshop but it was just really nice to chat about the book, the themes of colonization and language and dark academia and the romanticizing of studying and also it did go into spoilers a bit so I've got a few spoilers for the book but it was still a very good discussion and it was a really nice atmosphere and I'm glad I could go to book club and then today I was just working from home it was a bit of a slow moving work day for me I was finding it really difficult to get things done and I was also doing things I was unfamiliar with so it was just like a lot of brain power but after work I then went to a book event, which is kind of like work related again because it's one of our authors, but it was Podrake Otoma who does the podcast Poetry Unbound and he was in conversation with Raymond Antrobus, which if you've been around here for a while, you'll know that last year one of my favourite poetry collections of the year was All the Names Given by Raymond Antrobus. So it was just really nice to see him on stage and the way that they were in conversation with each other, it was absolutely fantastic. They got the audience involved talking about poetry that's moved them and stuck with them. And it was just, it was so warm and inviting to be in a room where poetry was the focus and writing poetry and analysing poetry. What does it mean for you? What does it do for you in your daily life? It was so nice to be there. I think in this vlog I mentioned that I do consider myself a poet above a writer and so when I go to events like that it really inspires me and really drives me and as someone who is a big poetry reader you can tell I'm a big poetry reader because although I have a massive TBR I've got no poetry on my TBR because as soon as I get it in I tend to read it and so 
yeah, I just love poetry. I eat it, breathe it, sleep it, live it. And I just think it's fascinating. So that was a really nice event. Went to dinner with some colleagues afterwards, but I've also been reading. So I have been reading a lot of things for work lately. So not really things for the vlog, but my travel book is A Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin. Don't worry, I'm not lugging this around with me. I've also borrowed it from my library, the ebook library because I borrow the ebook from my library when I'm on the tube, I read the ebook. When I'm at home, I read this big book. And I know that this is Gothtober. I know that I've reserved all of my gothic spooky reads for this readathon and all my mood is screaming at me is to read high fantasy books, which is not the plan, but I'm just going with the mood for now. And hopefully after this one, I'll get into gothic books. But I actually started this one over five years ago. I was halfway through and I've picked it up since and now I'm only like 100 pages left. I am racing through this ending and it's hooked me and that's all I want to do is read this book. This is the second book in the A Game of Thrones series and the titles are quite literal. In A Game of Thrones it's a high fantasy series, it's kind of a historical fantasy setting and it's about all these people who are playing to win the throne in Game of Thrones. We are now in Clash of Kings and this one there's lots of fighting going on, clash of people who claim that they are a king. So that is literally what happens in the second book and I don't love this one as much as the first. The first one rocked my world, I thought it was genius, it was a amazing political intrigue, fascinating, very daring in terms of characters would die left, right and centre, whereas this one I don't mean to be on the nose here because I know there's a desert on the cover but I'm finding it quite dry or at least until this ending point I was finding it quite dry. I think there are too many chapters about characters I don't really care about and because it's such a big book, over 800 pages, almost 900 pages, each character is getting a lot of time so when you get to those characters I really don't care about it is long and also some characters just have storylines that I know will weave into the series later but in this one it's very dry. They could literally be walking through a desert or they could literally be just following behind this king and nobody cares about their storyline and yet they're given pages after pages. So there's a lot of this that I would have chopped out. That said, the political intrigue is still done very very well. I'm more interested in political intrigue than seeing those fighting and war scenes playing out personally and I do think this book is ableism in it. I do think this book portrays women really badly so you've got all of those things and it's a lot more vulgar than it necessarily needs to be so there's definitely downsides to it but this ending now it's quite got me. I'm addicted, I want to see what's going to happen, despicable things are happening, tension is happening, suspense is happening, I want to know what's going to happen by the end so I am having a good time with it but equally it's not really the best book but I'm going to get to sleep because it is approaching 11 and tomorrow I'm going to work from home and then go out again in the evening so see you then. my laundry in the background so you can see how much black I usually wear even though I've been trying to be good and using some colors lately but I just got home it's almost midnight of day five and I am exhausted I can't wait to go to sleep but I thought I would just film this very quickly while I was all up in my feelings about it because I just came back from Brixton house with a friend and we went and saw breathing by numbers which was absolutely amazing it's probably one of the best things I've seen in theater so far this year and it was a really amazing combination of film, movement, spoken word poetry, there was a black choir involved and singing and instruments and it was just a masterpiece of all of those elements together combined with themes of pollution and climate change but also the ways in which black poverty exists and the ways in which pol pollution is affecting those people the ways in which black excellence exists, the ways in which racism exists and uh, racing of colour and culture and it was just amazing. Me and my friend we just sat there in our seats after we finished watching this show because we had to process it and then this man came around and he was like we need to start cleaning up the theatre area, you need to move and we were like we'll move but mentally emotionally we haven't moved yet. I think I'm still processing it but it was just 
it hit me right in the heart and it was very emotional it just really like it got me and I'm feeling very creative I'm feeling very inspired after the like Raymond Antrobus and Podrego Torma event yesterday and then going to breathing by numbers tonight and reading so much and I did a writing session with Hannah the other day just so much creativity is flowing through my life right now and even my job involves creativity because I'm in book publishing so it just feels so awe-inspiring and I'm happy with where I am and I want to stay here and I want to stay in this flow of creativity and I just I want to be creating and that's what I'm doing by vlogging right now but you know what I should also be doing sleeping so let me wrap this up quickly because I've only got 73 pages left of the clash of kings and everything is going down and I'm not okay and these books like there's so many problems with this series but I'm still addicted to it nonetheless and sometimes you just have those series that are bad for you but you love them anyway and that's how I'm feeling about the Game of Thrones series so far. I do have to say in this one I think I have fewer favourite characters. After reading Game of Thrones I was very set in my ways. I thought Arya was a favourite character, Daenerys was a favourite character for me and Tyrion was a favourite character for me but in this one Arya and Daenerys' storylines they just ain't it. It just is not it for me. They're lacking they're not giving me enough. So basically after this one my favourite has narrowed down to Tyrion alone and I wonder who will survive, who won't survive in these last 73 pages. I'm hoping to finish this big chunk of boy tomorrow to give you more thoughts. But for now, it's approaching midnight. I still need to get ready for bed and I have to go into the office. Well, I don't have to go into the office, but I am going into the office tomorrow. So I need to get some sleep. Morning my friends, it's day eight and I came in here just so that we'd have a different view. What has been happening, lots of work lately, lots of exciting things at work and I'm learning new things at work but it has been taking up a lot of my mind space when I am not rushing about doing things as you can see. So yesterday we had our reading sprints, it was really nice. Amy, Kelly, Kasha, Kara, they were all there with me and it was good because that was the first time this month that I had to properly sit down and get some reading done. So I got quite a bit of reading done, so I'm gonna give you a bit of an update. So A Clash of Kings has been my travel book and during those reading sprints, I read the last 20 pages. So after five years of currently reading this book, it is finally done, it is finally off of my TBR and everything I said stands. I do think this one didn't have a plot twisty, oh my goodness moment like the first book did, but it was still a very enjoyable read. It just wasn't my favorite in the series by any means. And I do think it got a bit slow, it got a bit boring and clocking in at 873 pages, I do think this book was overwritten for what it was. There were significant character deaths. I think George R. R. Martin is known for just killing off characters, but no notice and shocking you. But all the characters that died in this one were characters that I didn't really like or didn't care about. So even though they might still have been main characters, I really was not shocked or sad when they went. So yeah, this one had some like twists and turns I didn't expect, but overall a solid read, not my favourite, but I will continue in the series. And this one ticks off the prompt of betrayal or backstabbing because there was a lot of literal backstabbing in this book and as well as a lot of betrayals. So that's that Gothtober prompt done. And then during my lunch break yesterday at work, and I read Black and Female by Sitsi Daringba. I didn't actually finish the whole book. I don't know why I said I read. I read a lot of this. I've only got one more essay chapter left and it is Black History Month here in the UK in October. That is Black History Month in the UK. Yes, I also make a video about books in February, which is the US Black History Month. I deserve two Black History Months in my life, so I do celebrate both of them. So I wanted to make sure I was reading some Black authors during the spooky Gothtober month. And yes, this is non-fiction, but you don't have to only read Gothic books. And I do think this subject matter is quite dark because it's dealing a lot with feminism and racism within Zimbabwe which is where the author is from and I've learned so much about how women are treated over there that I really didn't know about. It goes into the history, it goes into the contemporary and present day, but it also talks about some of the difficulties she's faced as a black woman in the US trying to get her writing published and her creative work published. So I just think this one really covers a lot of ground and I'm finding all of the essays very, very informative. I did think the introduction in the first one was a bit dry and that was because I was being bombarded with a lot of history and I do think it's a lot to take in. 
I would have liked if it just had a bit more emotion injected into that section but I do think I would recommend this one I'm learning so much and yeah she talks about how when it comes to African authors there is a tendency to get authors that are Ghanaian and Nigerian and then that's all of the African author thing that you get you don't get books from um, black women from South Africa or Zimbabwe or other countries in Africa and it was just nice to kind of hear that voice and I do think it's a fair point that I need to read wider when I'm reading African authors. So very very good and seeing as I only have one more chapter, it's a short book overall so it's under 200 pages, I'm hoping to um, finish this one today after work if I possibly can and then during my reading sprints not to make Amy McCall cringe while she was there on the sprints with us I read Mina and the Undead and I'm really enjoying it I'm actually at the halfway mark this morning I woke up and in bed I just haven't been at home for a whole day in a while so I just thought just take this morning to read a bit and just lie in bed and spend a bit more time in bed than I usually would in the morning and yeah so I'm halfway through and I'm really really liking this one I think I've told you what it's about but just in case I haven't it's about a girl who moves to New Orleans to visit her sister Libby and in New Orleans murders consistently keep happening and now somebody has started to kill young women in the ways in which some of the mythology from New Orleans has which has to do with serial killers and vampires and things like that so they're killing women in the same way and Libby her sister gets incriminated for doing these crimes and so she's doing her best Mina is doing her best to prove her sister's innocence and find out who is killing the girls in New Orleans right now. Very, very good so far. I really love how many references it has to other horror films and other horror books. I just keep n noticing them and feeling like, oh, I know this, I know that. But at the same time, you don't need to know all of the horror pop culture to enjoy it because at its heart, it's a book about a girl who has a complicated relationship with her sister, has a complicated past with her missing mother and loves vampire lore, loves horror, and yet still struggles when the horrors become real and she feels like she needs to do something about it. There's also quite a cute relationship in this one, which is secondary to the whole thing, but I really like how I'm halfway through the book and the love interests have already gotten together. I think it's so rare. I think often it's like the love interests have to get together by the end rather than near the beginning so you can see them together trying to work together to solve the case. I actually quite like that. So this is definitely probably my first entirely gothic horror spooky read for the month although I do think the two fantasy books I read were very dark but now it's high time that I get to work I'm working from home today and then after that I'll update you with what I do after that after that so I am working right now but the post person just came and she opened the door and she had this huge stack of book mail for me and I could not believe it and it was just like look at this book mail I was so surprised but also some of it is really really lovely and all of them I kid you not all of those are gothic books I didn't show you in this video because I usually do book hauls but I'm excited for when I film this haul because there are some very very exciting gothic books and one of them came with some snacks and sweet treats and I can just see myself watching a horror film and eating those snacks but also I might just get peckish and not have time to watch a film because I've got to move rooms. welcome to my cozy bed I am getting ready to call it in for the night we're moving across to my new room so that has been most of my evening after work is just moving things across and I got all my books across now and all of my clothes so now it's just all the rest of my stuff that needs to go across which I can definitely do tomorrow morning 
but as you also saw I read on my lunch break and I've started some new books, finished one, so let's give you a bit of an update. So today I started The Garden of Evening Mist by Tan Tuan Eng and this is a historical fiction novel that's set in Malay and it's talking about this woman who was in a Japanese camp during one of the wars and she is now back in Malay in Malaysia and she is working on a garden in the memory of her sister so she's designing it the way that her sister would have wanted as her sister passed away in the camp and yes while she's also doing that there's a kind of occupation civil war going on and it's told in the perspective of looking back on your life and it's very very emotional and it's so beautifully written this is absolutely gorgeous prose and so I read the first quarter of it today and it's been a blast so far it's not been like a blast excitingly it's been very very good so far it's just very emotional very deep and even though sometimes I struggle with historical fiction I have been reading it a lot more lately and it's just so important to me and fascinating for me to read historical fiction that even though I'm not a big fan of war fiction at the moment, particularly English focused World War One and World War Two, or American focused World War One and World War Two, reading narratives of wars that are different wars are still is still very important to me, and I'm learning so much history around Malaysia and East Asian countries and the ways in which they had their conflicts and were treated by the British in colonization. So this has been very, very insightful. And I like how the history just weaves in naturally. So I started that one, I'm a quarter of the way through. I also on my lunch break finished Black and Female by reading that last chapter there. And I do think this last chapter was my favorite one. I think she just was speaking so poignantly on so many really important and relevant things that are still happening today, that are still dangerous today. And she put it in the context of intersectionality and why that's so important, what it means to be feminist but what it means to be black and feminist and why what it means to be black still depends on context. I thought it was all fascinatingly well done, very well written essay and so this was a very good read and because I finished black and female now that ticks off my BIPOC prompt because it's by a black author but today I also started another book and that is also for Black History Month, but also for Goftober because it's a thriller. And that is The Other Black Girl by Sakia Delilah Harris. And this is a thriller where there's one black girl who works at a publishing house, she's an editorial assistant, and they hire one more black girl, even though they didn't seem interested in diversity. But maybe it's not all as it seems when this new hire is done. I read quite a bit actually. I think I read the first 75 pages and all I can say is I don't like this book so far. I'm very disappointed. I was interested in reading this for the publishing house aspect because there's not that many books about publishing and critiquing publishing and now I realise I'm not going to be able to relate to this very much because the company that I work for is an independent company which is very different from a corporate publishing company or one of the big five. I've never worked in that environment so I can't relate and can't compare and also my publishing company is quite diverse. I'm not the only black woman and there are like many more ethnicities and sexualities within the office so yeah, I'm not going to be able to relate to this as much as I think, but it's interesting because it might be an accurate portrayal of what a bigger publishing house is like because the author definitely did work in one. What I really don't like about this is that this book is just chock full of all of the stereotypes that aren't really true. And the way that the black characters talk to each other is just not the way black people talk to each other in real life. Nobody talks like this. Nobody talks about these subjects all the time. And I just can't get over how much I feel like it just panders towards a white audience rather than a genuine audience just even the conversations they have I'm just rolling my eyes I don't believe it I don't believe this is what it would really be like also just even to get a taste of it in the first chapter she knows that a black woman is in the office before she even meets the black woman and that's because she smells the black woman's hair cream when that black woman is not in the room nobody is smelling black hair cream from that far away nobody and the fact that she also says Oh, and I can smell that it's not just a black woman's hair cream, it's a freshly applied black woman's hair cream. Girl, no, 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 that doesn't happen. You can't, what are you, a werewolf? No, there's just so many things in this book where I'm just like, sure, sure. The fact that we've got black characters reaching across to somebody else's table to grab their hot sauce and use it, and it's just, it's just, I don't know it just there's so many things in this that just make me cringe that, that really make me cringe and for me to just I don't want people to think 
And it's hard for me to say like, no other black people are like this because of course each person's experience of being black is different. So this is set in the US, so maybe, I don't know. <laughs> maybe in the US is different, but oh, this is so cringe to me. This is so cringe to me. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm only 75 pages in. I'm not even a third of the way through and I'm already just like, honey, no. So I'm going to do a bit of reading before I go to sleep. I've got my scented candle going. I've got my a drink I really like going. <laughs> and yeah, Friday night, night in. What can you do except for read romance? So this book is not on my Gotober reading list, but I'm going to read it anyway. That is Take a Hint, Daddy Brown by Talia Hibbert. And this is the kind of black representation where I'm like, honey, you go sis, you're doing it right. So this is a fake dating situation and I've already read the first 75 pages of this last month. I'm a very multi-reader person. I just pick things up and pause them on different times. But I really like those first 75 pages. I relate to Danny in a lot of ways, but I don't love her that much. Whereas the male main character, I think his name is Sophia. Yes, Sophia. I adore him. I think he is fantastic. He has a lot of depth. He is the sweetest and the cutest. He listens to romance audiobooks. Honestly, this man, this man, very cute. I shipped this couple, so I'm gonna read and see how that goes. <laughs> So today is day eight, which will be the last day of this vlog. And it's pretty much over halfway throughout this day. I've mostly been just unpacking into my new room. And now I'm finished and my new room is all set up. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a show of what my new room looks like. And there's plenty of space for working out. I definitely left a key bit there. Working out and doing yoga is one of my key hobbies other than reading and writing. In between unpacking my room, I've been taking plenty of reading breaks just to give me motivation and so that I can sit down for a bit amongst doing all the things I've been doing and on my lunch break I just literally finished reading The Other Black Girl by Sakita Halila Harris. I absolutely raced through this one and I absolutely did not like this book. I mentioned before how this book is so chock full of stereotypes and I will say that in the middle there it got a bit more interesting. I think it did a good job of building some semblance of suspense and I wanted to see what the plot twist was going to be like and where it was all leading up to. Unfortunately the plot twist and what it was leading towards was absolutely a massive disappointment. It added in a weird element that didn't make sense, that wasn't cohesive with the rest of the story. It also was very out of the blue, it was all of a sudden and it was so wishy-washy. The ending doesn't make any sense and I can see that it's the author really shoehorning in some commentary and some themes that she wants to put in there right at the end but she doesn't pull it off she doesn't do it well just like a book I recently read that was middle grade Escape Room by Christopher Edge it just put in this random plot twist for no good reason other than I want to put some racial commentary in there and it doesn't even do it well it doesn't even discuss and unpack that commentary so basically you can take the message and meaning of this commentary in several ways some of which are not such good avenues and others which are better but still are not fully developed and explained by the end of this book so by the end of this book I was just so frustrated because nothing made sense and it was just a plot twist for the sake of having a plot twist this was a massive disappointment but yes definitely wouldn't be recommending this one. Oh, and I didn't even mention the fact that there is a secondary storyline that's told through different other black girls points of view and I don't think it fit into the story I don't think that sub storyline was necessary I think they could have given Nella more agency and just cut those chapters all together because we get them so 
rarely that I don't care about those characters and it was sort of just a crutch for the author to release plot twists. That's something that my sister said and I kind of agree with her on this one. So yeah, this was a disappointment. This is kind of embodies things that I tend to not like about thrillers so that makes me really sad because I was hoping with Goftober I could maybe read some of my thrillers and read some of the ones that I and just find ones that I do like but this has put me right out of the mood for thrillers. I think actually the next thing I'm going to go back to reading is more non-fiction because I was enjoying reading Black and Female but now it's over so I think for Black History Month I'm just going to read another Black authored non-fiction book and see how I can fit that into my prompts. <laughs> So today has been epically busy and I've just spent so much of my time on my feet that now that it's coming to the late afternoon, we're approaching five o'clock, I want to sit down and have some tea because I have been so busy this week, I haven't had the time to find that tea from my tea advent calendar because what we do here is read books and drink tea. But before I start, I did sit down, I had a nice epic shower that I feel like I very much deserved and then I sat down and started Out of the Sun by Essie Ibuyan. This is, sorry if you can hear the washing machine going, this is the an essay collection, it's quite, quite modern essays and they're to do with race but a lot of them also have to do with artwork and history so it's touching on those things. I finished one essay and that was all about blackness and art and the portrayal of black figures in Victorian and oil paintings and portraits and the like which is just something I never really looked into or studied much. Yes I see it in museums but I never really had a like essay about it so that was very insightful and interesting and now I'm on one which has to do with black ghost figures and that comes from some of the black ghost fairy tales and stories that black people have told for years but also the ghosts of people who who died without acknowledgement who died without their own names and things like that so very very insightful enjoying this this is what I wanted from a non-fiction read so as I was saying before this clip cut out because of the fact that I didn't have enough space I'm going to go and make the cup of tea and I'm going to keep reading more of Mina and the Undead and the tea that we need to try today is number 11 this is going to take me so long to get through this advent calendar, honestly. Okay, so number 11 is called Revitalize and it says a burst of warming cinnamon, cardamom and ginger. That is exactly what I need right now. Herbs together, that smell of Christmas, warm, uplifting, a cup to make your spirit festive. And I think something that's warm and uplifting is good for how much heavy lifting I have done today. So I'm looking forward to making this tea and reading this book. And I'm also going to finish snacking on these popcorn, she had pecan pie popcorn, which is like caramel popcorn with like pecan bits in it, which I got when I told you about that book that came with all these goodies. Yeah, the snack came with it and I snapped on it while I was waiting for my camera to clear up space so I could film this. So now let me go and make a cup of tea. It's day nine, so it's about time that I close out this vlog. But I just wanted to give you one last reading update. Yesterday I went and I met Abby from Abby of Pelennor for the first time in person, and we went out for drinks, and it was really, really nice, and I got to meet her partner. But 
we did not take any photos or do any filming because we were just caught up in meeting each other, which is perfectly fine. But I had a really good time and it was very nice to meet you, Abby. But also before I left, I did drink my tea. I did read some books and I really, really love that revitalized tea. I think it is festive. It's got the perfect Christmas vibes to it. If you like having Christmassy taste, but you don't like peppermint, which is seen as a very traditional Christmas taste, the revitalized tea is one that I would recommend you, but also the spices just all together were really, really nice. And I just, I really liked it. Some of the teas that I've been trying in this calendar that I've really liked, I've gone and bought myself a full box of them and I'm gonna do the same for this one. And I was reading Mina and the Undead and I've only got 75 pages left. So I presume that in my next vlog, I will finish this book if you want my final thoughts but I am loving it. I'm having a really, really good time with it. I just find it so fun. And I love when young adult horror is just a very good time. It's a very fun time. For a long time here, I wasn't sure if this book was going to get supernatural or not. And maybe it seems like it will be getting supernatural with one of my favorite creatures of the night involved. So I'm very, very happy. I know it says Mina and Undead in the title, but I was doubting it for a second. And so, it's getting even better in my opinion. I've only got 75 pages left. I don't even know what's gonna happen. I'm looking forward to it. On my way to meet Abby and come back, I decided to start a travel book, so a book that I can just read while I'm on the tube. And I started We Are The Brennans by Tracy Lange, and this is a debut novel. And I strongly believed it was a thriller, but right now it's reading quite domestic and family vibes and I quite like it because we're introduced to this huge family and the family's quite big. There seems to be lots of different characters in this one, like the one who takes care of everyone and the one who's fiercely independent. And then there's also someone who I believe he's autistic or he has some processing disability. So we're definitely meeting a whole range of people and the family's just so big and vivacious and I really like that and we're following Sunday who gets into a car crash everybody thinks she's living the perfect life over in LA but she gets into a car crash and she's sent back home to recover back to New York with her big family all in one house and yeah so it seems like she's got some secrets but it also just seems like this whole family as a whole are struggling to cope are trying to be there for each other and it's just interesting to see them all meet them all and see where they're at I say this like I read a lot of the book and I've only read 33 pages so I just started this one but very, very curious to see where it goes and maybe it will end up being a thriller. I picked it up because it's a thriller and this is Goftober, but we shall see. I know I said I didn't want to read more thrillers after The Other Black Girl, but apparently I was lying. There you have it. This is the first week of Goftober. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comment section down below, have you read any books by black authors lately or have you read any good fantasy books? I'd love to hear about them. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't you forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video and you know what they say, onwards and upwards. Excelsior!